all right so we are nearing the end of our discussion of electronic spectroscopy this really is the climax of our entire discussion of electronic spectroscopy what we'll try to do now is using the principles that we have learned of quantum chemistry quantum mechanics and uh, group and uh, symmetry we are going to do a case study for once we'll try to see what the spectrum of benzene looks like and uh, why it looks like what it does we'll try to assign the bands of benzene uh, to the best of our abilities and while we do that we will learn something else that is called vibronic coupling right. So, we start with the electronic states and transitions of benzene all the figures that you see except the ones that I have drawn are uh, from Harrison Bartolucci's book. This uh, discussion has been done very nicely in Harrison Bartolucci's book you can follow it for this part right. If you remember the last time we met which seems like a long time ago we had discussed the case of oxygen. And in oxygen, we had said that the electron configuration was 1 pi u 4, 1 pi g 2, alright. So, what is the, what is the unique feature of this? The highest occupied molecular orbital that we have is doubly degenerate and these orbitals have 2 electrons. So, in the simplest case scenario, we just draw 2 orbitals and 2 arrows pointing in the same direction, right. But as we learn, if we do a little more treatment, uh, little more detailed treatment of this scenario, what we do is in order to find the symmetry of the state, we need to take the direct product of the symmetries of the orbitals that are singly occupied. And in this case, those orbitals are pi g. So, what we did was we did pi g cross pi g, and in doing that, we obtained three different states, three different symmetries sigma g plus, sigma g minus and delta g alright. And the other thing that we discussed is that you cannot just assign singlet and triplet to anything and everything here because if you take singlet and triplet of all these you get a total of 16 states. But then not all of these states are allowed by Pauli principle. So, in order to maintain a total wave function that is anti-symmetric we found that we end up only with 6 states and the 6 state makes sense because if you remember we had drawn the, those boxes 4 boxes and we tried to fill with 2 electrons there also we had obtained 6 states. So, the 6 states we obtain are singlet sigma g plus, singlet delta g and triplet delta g minus and we had discussed that the triplet state is the lowest energy state and the other 2 are higher energy states we had discussed what the energies are and we had discussed how first of all all these three states arise out of the same electron configuration right. It is just a combination of different spatial and temporal parts corresponding to the same electron configuration which is this 1 pi u 4, 1 pi g 2. That is the first thing to understand that the same electron configuration can actually give you different states. And secondly, we had said that of course, this transition between them would be uh, not allowed, there will be spin forbidden, but still there can be a little bit of transition because you can have spin orbit coupling which makes uh, which uh, par, which ascribes a little bit of allowedness to even spin forbidden transitions and that is why we said in uh, liquid state oxygen has a faint blue color. And finally, we discussed how this a kind of energy level diagram or rather this kind of uh, arrangement of energy levels has a profound implication in uh, the application of ox oxygen in uh, biological systems, how uh, you can uh, have an organic molecule which you can excite to a triplet state and this triplet state can photosensitize oxygen to produce singlet oxygen which is very highly reactive. That can be uh, the cause of a disease like porphyria, it can also be the basis of a treatment like photodynamic therapy and this is what we had discussed uh, last day. Today what we will do is we will extend our discussion to a bigger molecule which is benzene. Benzene of course, everybody knows the structure. What I have done here is I have shown you the character table and 
since there are many uh, symmetry operations let us not be confused about which one is which ok. Let us just quickly go through the character table of benzene of course, E everybody understands C 6 not difficult to see where is C 6? C 6 is perpendicular to the uh, benzene ring and it goes through the center. What is C 3? And why do I have 2 C uh, 2 C 6? Where is the other C 6? Yeah. One is clockwise and the other is anti clockwise. Great. What is C 3? C 3 is just C 6 square clockwise or anti clockwise. Are we clear? Then what is C 2? C 2 is C 6 cube right start from here C 6 another C 6 another C 6 that is essentially a C 2. Why do I not write 2 C 2? I have written 2 C 3 I have written 2 C 6 why have I not written 2 C 2? Because it is the same right no matter whether you turn clockwise or anti clockwise you get back the same co configuration. So, C 2 there is only one, but then there are two more kinds of C 2s C 2 dash and C 2 double dash where are they? They are perpendicular to the C 2 axis all right. What is C 2 dash? C 2 dash is a C 2 axis that goes through opposite atoms and C 2 double dash is a C 2 axis that goes through the center of bond. This is the convention that is followed when we write the character table. Of course, you could take the different convention opposite convention and write your own character table, but then uh, the problem is your results your uh, molecular nomenclature and everything will be a little different from what it is in the textbook. In fact, there are textbooks in which the opposite convention is used. So, whenever we have a big molecule we have to be absolutely sure which convention is in use there all right. So, we are done with all the axes center of inversion is very easy to understand. Then S 3 is also very easy to understand I hope C 6 axis doubles as S 3 axis as well. S 6 same thing sigma h is the plane of the molecule horizontal plane of symmetry sigma d and sigma v once again matter of convention sigma d is the plane that goes through the uh, center of the uh, center of the bonds and sigma v goes through the atoms ok. In some cases just exactly opposite uh, convention is followed, but the convention we have followed is this and this is how you get this character table and one thing that I now like to use because otherwise the problem becomes very long is a product table. You know what a product table is? We are working with direct products right. So, suppose I have to do B 1 G cross E 1 G what is it B 1 G cross E 1 G will give you E 2 G and here I have only shown a partial character table otherwise the, the font size would be too small. The thing to remember is that whenever we have g cross g we get g, whenever we have u cross u we get g, whenever we have g cross u or u cross g we get u. So, I hope it will not be difficult to use this partial character table even if we have uh, some uh, u symmetries as well all right great. Now, it is time to look at the molecular orbitals of benzene that we are all familiar with. These are the molecular orbitals of benzene. And I hope everybody understands what I mean when I write like this. What I have done is I have shown the p orbitals. Molecular orbitals as you know are uh, generated by taking linear combinations of atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals in question here are the p z orbitals. If you take the uh, benzene ring to be in x y plane right. So, uh, you can say that whenever I have an empty circle I am looking down from the top right. Empty circle means say plus lobe and solid circle means minus slope or the other way around does not matter. So, when I have something like this what would be the symmetry of that? The lowest energy atomic orbital uh, sorry molecular orbital what would be the energy yes A 1 g A 1 g is totally symmetric. Do we agree that the lowest energy molecular orbital here will be A 1 g? Do we all agree? I do not agree because this molecular orbital has to be anti symmetric with respect to sigma h right has to be anti symmetric with respect to inversion as well. So, cannot be totally symmetric the state will be a 1 g I agree with you because in the state we will have completely filled orbitals, but the molecular orbital is not a 1 g. What is the symmetry? 
what is the character for E 1, what is the character for C 6, C 6 1, what is the character for C 3, 1. So, this kind of rotation where there is uh, no uh, conversion from top to bottom of the plane uh, character should be 1. So, C 6, C 3, C 2 all these 3 should be 1 all right. So, what is it A or B has to be A right 1 or 2 that we will see uh, G or U that we can say very easily G or U, U. So, we do not even look at these we look at these ok. C 2 with respect to C 2 what will it be plus or minus C 2, C 2 what happens when I apply C 2 this is my plane C 2 and C 2 dash both are like this if I apply C 2 you see the other face right, right. So, suppose this face is plus this face is minus when I apply C 2 or it can be C 2 double C 2 dash sorry when it is C 2 dash or C 2 what am I saying I said C 2 that is why you got confused I am sorry C 2 of course, it is plus 1, but what about C 2 dash what about C 2 double dash character has to be minus 1. So, 1 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 S 3 turn and reflect minus 1 minus 1 S 6 minus 1 uh, sigma h minus 1 sigma d plus 1 because there is no top to bottom conversion sigma h plus 1. So, which one is it you are right it is a to u ok. So, do not jump to conclusions because it can be tricky a to u uh, these are the, the, the next higher energy pair is e 1 g of course, 2 are there degenerate. So, they must belong to a 2 dimensional representation you can work it out uh, the way to work it out is to actually write the expression of the uh, wave functions maybe I will give it to you as a homework. So, suppose you call this psi 1 and suppose you call this psi 2 and let us say I number like this carbon 1 2 3 4 5 6 ok. What will psi 1 be minus phi 1 no sorry what did I say this uh, hollow circle is plus we said right. So, it will be psi 1 will be phi 1 where phi 1 phi 2 these are all p, uh, p orbitals p z orbitals of the atoms phi 1 plus phi 2 minus phi 3 minus phi 4 minus phi 5 plus phi 6 are we clear. Of course, there will be a normalization factor we can neglect it. What about this which one was 1 this is 1 right in this case coefficient of phi 1 is 0. So, it is phi 2 plus phi 3 minus phi 5 minus phi 6 all right. What happens when you apply C 6 it will move and accordingly you can write the expression of psi 1 dash accordingly you can write the expression of psi 2 dash then what you have to do is you have to uh, generate the transformation matrix. Once you do that you can convince yourself that this actually belong to E 1 g. I will not get into that, but you can do it yourself ok. Is there any other way of doing it? First of all it is a two dimensional uh, representation right. If I want to take a shortcut assuming that I have not gone wrong anywhere I can actually work out E 1 g without working out the entire uh, transformation matrix by taking some shortcut. What is the shortcut? First of all suppose I do not know this I know it is g right can you see that it is g this one is g is this also g of course. What about this is this g or u will this be g or u start from here this is plus go through the center go through the other side remember what going through the other side means this is plus you have to go here right. So, this one is it g or is it u these are u these are g. So, already one third of the problem is done in fact, two thirds of the problem is done because you know that the only two dimensional representations are E. So, I know it has to be E, I know it has to be e. I know this is U and this is G, I only have to figure out one or two. So, in this case question is E 1 G or E 2 G right. Let us see E 1 G and E 2 G where do they differ 
uh, they differ in the character of s3 and all are very difficult to do uh, in the character of sigma h right minus with respect to sigma h that is e1g plus with respect to sigma h that is your e2g right so this one is it minus with respect to sigma h or plus with respect to sigma h? Huh? Plus? No. Sigma h. So, you want Right? So, this is my shortcut. I do not really have to work out the matrix all the time. If I, if the character table is given, character table makes our uh, life a lot easier as we have actually learned in the uh, inorganic chemistry class where without even understanding what character table is you could use it and get your results right. So, here hopefully you understand a little more. Similarly, you can work out that this is E to U and I leave it to you to work out that this is B to G alright. I hope everybody can do this now and I am uh, within my rights if I ask questions on this and not necessarily in benzene alright great. Now, now let us get to the business that we really want to do. This is my electron configuration right in ground state and excited state agreed. Ground state we have of course, we have a 2 u 2 as well, but the homo is e 1 g 4 these are fully filled. Excited state means first excited state one electron will go from e 1 g to e 2 u. So, instead of e 1 g 4 I have E 1 G 3 E 2 U 1 understood everybody. See if you do not understand please ask you are ok with the symmetries of the molecular orbitals I hope. Now, you agree with this that for the ground state how many electrons are there how many pi electrons are there 6 how will they be filled 2 2 2. So, A 2 U 2 E 1 G 4 ok and all the MOs that are there are actually doubly occupied. So, what will be the state? What will be the symmetry of the state in that case ground state? All occupied MOs are doubly occupied. In that case, Vishwarup's original answer now is correct. When all filled MOs are doubly filled, then it is a totally symmetric state, right? So, this is a singlet A1G state, ok? All right, singlet because all electrons are paired you can just go by that. What about what happens when there is an excitation homo lumo excitation homo is E 1 g lumo is E 2 u. If I have homo lumo excitation instead of 4 electrons here I will have 3. So, I get E 1 g 3 and now I have 1 electron in E 2 u that gives me E 2 u 1 agreed now ok. Now, how do I find the symmetry of this state? What are the what are the MOs that are singly occupied? 1 E 1 G and 1 E 2 U ok. So, to determine the symmetry of the state I have to do E 1 G cross E 2 U do we agree? Because 1 E 1 G orbital is singly occupied 1 E 2 U orbital is singly occupied as we have discussed earlier we get the symmetry of the overall wave function or the state by taking direct product of the symmetries of the singly occupied molecular orbitals. So, we need to do E 1 g cross E 2 u understood Sambit. Now, of course, you can do it ab initio it is not such a big deal, but since we have this product table we can just see what do we have to do E 1 cross E 2 right forget G u for now E 1 cross E 2 E 1 cross E 2 what do I get B 1 plus B 2 plus E 1 and in this case I am doing G cross U. So, what will be uh, what will be the uh, direct product G or U it will be U. So, this one will be B 1 U plus B 2 U plus E 1 U please tell me if we are all ok with this. Do you have you all understood that since E 1 g and E 2 u orbitals are singly occupied I have to take a direct product of those direct product of E 1 neglecting this g and u for now 
direct product of E1 and E2 is B1 plus B2 plus E1 and since I am doing G cross U, E1 G cross E2 U instead of G I will have U here right 1 into minus 1 is minus 1. So, that direct product gives me B1 U plus B2 U plus E1 U all right. So, the states that you can generate are these. And see, I can have singlet as well as triplet. Now, the two electrons that are there in singly occupied orbitals, they are in orbitals of different energies. If the two electrons were in orbitals with same energy, then you would be restricted by Pauli principle, right? Not all wave functions would be allowed. But now, one electron is in E1G, one electron is in E2U. So, I can take combinations that are singlet, I can take combinations that are triplet. So, you will end up getting all these states singlet and triplet E1U, B2U, B1U. And the reason why we have these dashed lines and question mark is that we are working under uh, the approximation that whatever state we generate that is the state we work with that is not necessary. I do not know if you have studied configuration interaction in 4 to 5. Have you studied configuration interaction in CH4 to 5? Maybe not. That is taught in CH560. So, when you study configuration interaction, you learn that actually states or rather electron configurations or I can say states, states which have the same symmetry and same energy actually mix to produce one state with lower energy, one state with higher energy. In fact, you have encountered this situation I am sure. Have you heard of no crossing rule? No crossing rule? Some have heard, some have not, but no crossing rule is a uh, really a manifestation of configuration interaction. But for now, let us neglect all these dashed arrows and question marks. Let us stick to singlet and triplet E1U, B2U, B1U. If there is a question, this is the time to ask. Any question? Shubham, no question? Very good. Then we will proceed. So, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, no, no, this, this what all it means is that there are six states. Total six states are there. They are shown the singlet states together and triplet states together. But actually, they do not have the same energy. Do not think they have the same energy. You see, uh, these three lines actually indicates that they have different energies. But which one is higher, which one is lower, we do not want to worry about that right now. That will require a rigorous quantum chemical calculation. That is all it means. What it means is that by symmetry arguments, you get three states singlet and triplet. Triplet is written lower because you know that everything else being same, triplet will have lower energy. But which one of these singlet states is higher in energy, which one of these triplet state is higher in energy. For that you will need to do a little more uh, involved quantum chemical calculation, we are not getting into that. Are we okay? Any other question? Can I go ahead? Great. So, now the next question to ask is which of these transitions are allowed? See your ground state is A1G and singlet A1G of, co of course. Ground state is singlet, right? So, only singlet to singlet transitions will be spin allowed. Okay, We are only talking about the orbital alloweness or al orbital forbiddenness at the moment. So, the implicit assumption is that we are talking about singlet to singlet transitions. Because ground state is not triplet definitely. So, singlet to triplet transitions will only occur if there is a strong spin orbit coupling. We are not talking about that at the moment. So, but from the view of symmetry only, which of these will be allowed? A1G to E1U, A1G to B1U, A1G to B2U. How do we decide which of these are orbitally allowed? How do I decide which of these are orbitally allowed? Yes? Yeah? I heard an answer. No, Laporte is different. Oh, do not <laughs> think of a general treatment. What is the transition moment integral? It is something like this, right? Psi 2, 
psi 1 integrated over all space and in the middle what do you have? Mu and mu as you know has x and y and z components alright. What is this psi 1? What is the symmetry? What is the symmetry of psi 1? Not just g, a 1 g. Psi 2 is e 1 u or b 1 u or b 2 u whatever it is ok. So, the question is let us say we are talking about what is the first one we have written e 1 g, e 1 g. So, the question is does one of these triple products contain the totally symmetric representation. Remember the integral is going to be non vanishing when the integrand is totally symmetric. So, what we really have to do is to find the symmetry of the triple product and see whether it has a 1 g or not all right agreed great. So, now one good thing has happened already ground state is a 1 g right ground state a 1 g means that multiplied by anything will give back the same thing we do not even have to worry we only have to worry about the direct product e 1 g cross whatever is the symmetry of x or y or z. Similarly, we have to worry about the direct product of b 1 u and whatever is the symmetry of x or y or z, b 2 u whatever is the symmetry of x or y or z right. Now, one thing that you will yeah I am sorry ok right right. Have I written e 1 g here? e 1 g, you are right ok. So, of course, to do that I need to tell you what is the symmetry of x and y and z and this is what is written here I do not know if you have noticed z is a 2 u and x and y together form a basis of e 1 u ok. z is a 2 u and x and y together is e 1 u all right that comes from the character table. Now, with this information without doing anything else without looking at the character table or without looking at the product table can you tell me whether this a 1 g to e 1 u transition is allowed or not allowed why Raksha? So, Raksha is trying to do it by Gerade and Ungerade only, but do not forget that Gerade and Ungerade only tell you about inversion. So, it can tell you some whether something is not allowed, but it, there might be transitions that seem to be allowed because it is Gerade Ungerade, but it might not be allowed by something else. You have to look at all symmetry operations, and if you remember. One small working formula that we have worked out is you have this gamma i cross gamma j. When will it contain say a 1 g? We had worked this out. When will the direct product gamma i cross gamma j contain a totally symmetric representation? Yes. When both are same, of course, they will contain. Remember that? Then every 1 will be multiplied by, by a 1, every minus 1 will be multiplied by minus 1. So, when both are same, definitely they will contain totally symmetric representation. So, you see e 1 u and x and y together form a basis of e 1 u. So, e 1 u cross e 1 u must contain a 1 g. So, it is allowed ok or vitally allowed. And then if you want to do a little more detailed treatment we can see. So, this is what we are trying to evaluate right. First one is a 1 g you do not worry about in the, the, here the problem is it is written in the other way compared to what we are working, but does not matter. 
u1 u cross a2 u or u1 u b1 u cross a2 u or u1 u b2 u cross a2 u or u1 u so even without working out anything more you can i think see that a1 g to e1 u is allowed and it is allowed through x and y directions. The other two are not allowed orbital. All right. And then to convince us a little further, let us take help of this product table and let us see what the direct products are a2 u cross e1 u, a2 cross e1. What is it? e1, e1 g because you are doing u cross u. E1 u cross E1 u, what is it? E1, E1 will give me A1 plus A2 plus E2. Should it be G or U? I am doing E1 u cross E1 u, G, right? So it will be A1 g and this is our A1 g. This is what we are looking for. A1 g plus A2 g plus E2 g. This is what you will get, right? And this A1 g is what makes it allowed. What about A2 u cross B, B1 u? A2 cross b1 what do you get b2 and should it be g or should it be u yeah a2 u cross b1 u g b2 g and e1 u cross b1 u is also e2 g similarly you can work out these as well and you can convince yourselves that in only one case i get a1 g and that is a1 g to e1 u transition so that is what tells us that singlet a1 g to singlet e1 u is a fully allowed transition. What is the meaning of fully allowed transition? Spin allowed as well as orbitally allowed. The other two are orbitally forbidden. All right. So, this is what we arrive at that for benzene. Now, we know what the uh, symmetries of the orbitals are. We know what are the uh, ground state and excited states involved at least for the lowest energy transitions and we have been able to determine which of these transitions are fully allowed, which of these transitions is fully allowed and which are not orbitally allowed. Of course, singlet a1 g to singlet b1 u, is it spin allowed? This transition here, of course, it is orbitally forbidden, is it spin allowed? Forget the orbital part, singlet to singlet, that is spin allowed, right? Singlet a1 g to singlet b2 u orbitally forbidden i agree is it spin allowed right yes it is spin allowed so spin there has a doubt doubt fine you agree with me that for these two transitions they are orbitally forbidden now i am asking you to forget about the orbital part for the moment i am saying both of these are singlet to singlet transitions so from the point of view of spin are they allowed or are they not allowed? Remember what the uh, transition moment integral is or how we wrote it. We wrote transition moment integral as psi s dash psi s integrated over all space psi v dash psi v integrated over all space psi e dash mu psi e integrated over all space. So, so far what we have discussed is this, right. This part we have said that for un, until now our discussion, in our discussion we said that this is the Frank Condon factor, it decides the intensity. This part decides whether a transition is spin allowed or not, all right. So, if I forget about the rest of the factors, think only about this, then I know that singlet to singlet is a spin allowed transition. That is what I am saying. That even though it is orbitally forbidden, it is spin allowed. Does not mean that we are going to see uh, a band corresponding to it. We will see what happens, all right. But it is a spin allowed orbitally forbidden transition. Agreed? And the first one is a fully allowed transition, okay. So, in the next part, we will see whether there is any way in which this orbitally forbidden transitions can become allowed or not.